heavy wattage. Lots of star power along both defensive lines. J.J. Watt and Ryan Kerrigan, two of the best at their positions in the entire country. Big Ten Network Football, Wisconsin and Purdue. Both teams with lots on the line. Wisconsin trying to keep pace atop the Big Ten standings. While Purdue, they still have hopes of becoming bowl eligible. Well, for the absolute latest, let's go down to the field and Carissa Thompson. Yeah, guys, as you mentioned, Sean Robinson getting his first start at quarterback for Purdue and hoping that an offensive line, which according to, according to offensive coordinator Gary Nord was their biggest weakness headed into the season, is now their biggest strength, will offer up the protection he needs. Meanwhile, for Wisconsin, their offensive line has just been outstanding, giving up only six sacks in the last eight games. That's the second best mark in the Big Ten. But, of course, today they get Ryan Kerrigan and they've had some practice over the last couple of weeks. Cameron Hayward at OSU and then Adrian Claiborne at Iowa. But according to Gabe Karimi, he says today we're going to see Kerrigan and so far he's the best. So they're looking forward to the challenge, guys. Carissa, thank you so much. Brett Bielema looking on. He has uh, had just a nice run here in this his fifth year as the head guy with the Badgers. 45 and 15 is the, uh, the career record for Bielema. He has got a chance to pass... Uh, Dave McLean and move up to 46 career wins. That's a significant spot if he can win today. And there's Danny Hope now in his second season with the Boilermakers. And Danny Hope keeping it together for Purdue. Obviously a lot of adversity they've been dealing with, but they play well at home. Certainly be a big test today. Now Danny Hope's Purdue Boilermakers, they have just won the coin toss. They have decided they want to defer to the second half. So Wisconsin will receive the football. And certainly when you have David Gilreath back deep for Wisconsin, as good of a returner as there is in college football, it puts a heavy emphasis on lane integrity for Purdue. Yeah, woke up today, temperatures in the 30s. We're still there. Temperature kickoff, 38 degrees. Uh, wind about six miles an hour, probably not that much of a factor. Today's opening kickoff brought to you by Haas Avocados. We talked about the temperature. I was down on the field earlier. Receivers and warm-ups, a lot of drops. A little colder than most are used to. Big Ten record holder and returns and return yardage. It's going to be an onside kick. It's recovered by Purdue, but there's a flag down on the field. Oh, that worked to perfection, but there's a flag down on the field. Can only imagine it's going to be against Purdue. Love the play call, though. Your team that you have a lot stacked against you, dump out the playbook today. Take risk. Todd Gearlings, Offside, our referee. Number 21 of the kicking team. Five-yard penalty. We will re-kick. The unfortunate thing is now you let the cat out of the bag, so to speak. A little antsy. That time Ricardo Allen. But that's a little snapshot, Eric, of what we can expect from Purdue today. I would expect that we will see a lot of trickeration, a lot of creativity, trying to manufacture some points for the Boilermakers. So they move it back five yards, and the kickoff now will be from the 25-yard line. And it would take a lot of guts to call two consecutive <laughs> onside kicks to begin a ball game. Calculated wrist, my friend. Carson Wiggs tees it up at the 25. He's ready to go. This time he boots it. Good kick at the seven yard line. Brady Ewing, one of the fullbacks, is going to bring it out across the 25 and Ewing stood up as he makes it to the 30-yard line. So the Badgers start on offense. Riding fifth-year senior from Chicago, Scott Tolzien. He has been fantastic just from a winning perspective. He has won 17 of the 21 games he started with the Badgers. No, and how about accuracy and consistency, which are the two things that you look for in a quarterback. Tolzien playing at an extremely high level. Seems to have a good understanding of the offense better harmony with his wide receivers and overall good command of the system. So that 71% completion percentage trails only Dan Persa in the Big Ten. 
And they want to run it on first down. They give it to the big fellow from Racine. John Clay powers forward for a gain of five. A busy day around the Big Ten. If you're looking for another Big Ten Network game this afternoon, go to BigTenNetwork.com slash GameFinder to get the channel numbers for all of today's games. Only team matchups. Only team with a bye this week, uh, the Ohio State Buckeyes. They are off. Getting ready for their big matchup with Iowa next week. Second down at five. Again, on the ground, and this time it's blown up. Ryan Kerrigan got penetration, and he gets a tackle for a loss of two. He's done that a lot. Well, when you look at Purdue, they know that they have to be physical and make plays. This time, just getting disruption. Werner shooting the gap. He's a strong side linebacker. Again, he's a 6'4", a little longer than you find in most linebackers. Good job of playing downhill. So Warner with the tackle for loss. It wasn't Ryan Kerrigan. You always expect to mention Kerrigan when there's a tackle made behind the line of scrimmage. Now on third and seven, a pass play. It's complete to Nick Toon, and Toon's got himself a first down. Well, we've got a chance to take a look at the Rotel Velveeta starting offense because you can't start your game day without their famous queso dip. We start with the offensive line, and we highlight Peter Kahn's. Didn't play in the second half two weeks ago against Iowa. He's got an ankle injury. He's back starting once again today. Backs and receivers, well, we highlight Jake Bird because, once again, he's in the starting lineup. He's replacing Lance Kendricks at tight end. Kendricks may play. He did dress. We did see him in warm-ups. But right now, starting the ball game, it's Jake Byrne, the junior from Arkansas. On first down and 10, Carey, Monty Ball gets it close to midfield. It'll bring up second down and seven. Well, Monty Ball's roles increased recently, particularly with James White a little banged up on the knee. But this offensive line has a great deal of confidence in Ball. They've seen him flash and make big plays most recently in the Iowa game. The upper right-hand corner of your screen updates around the Big Ten. Already, Michigan Wolverines have scored a touchdown in their ball game against Illinois. Pitch and catch complete for another first down. Nick Toon getting used early in this ball game picks up eight yards. Yeah, and Wisconsin loves that little slip screen, Eric. When they get the wide receiver, big body like Nick Toon outside, they feel like they can stick this ball in there. Good job of the receiver, Isaac Anderson, getting out to make the first block to pop it loose for Nick Toon. Toon's been dealing with a thigh injury, also had a turf toe earlier in the year. It's good to see him back out there. He's got two catches, both for first downs. Eric, it's important for Purdue to get Wisconsin off schedule. They can't allow him to be so effective on first and second down. Gil Reed, the man in motion. They fake to the first man through, looking for the big pop down the field, and it's intercepted. Albert Evans with the interception. Welcome back to the starting lineup. Mr. <laughs> Evans hadn't played in a couple of weeks. Well, it's a welcome back party for Purdue. Watch Evans flip his hips, and he's going to go up and track this ball. Outstanding ball skills, goes up and gets it. Evans, if you've been out, missed some, some game reps, how exciting it is to be back particularly when you make big plays like that. Look at that. Purdue is now forced to turnover. Every game but one, basically, over the last two years. So they'll have the ball first down and 10 on the 21-yard line. True freshman quarterback Sean Robinson to throw. And maybe a little bit too much juice early on. Looking for the tight end Kyle Adams, and it's high. And that's okay. You would expect to see some of that from a guy that hasn't gotten many game reps. The big thing for Sean Robinson today, stay in the framework of the offense. It is very much simplified. Make one quick read and try to deliver a strike. Just 19 years of age, he is from Springfield, Illinois, at the Rochester High School. This time, catch is made. Cortez Smith picks up five yards. Gets to the 26-yard line. Take a look at the Rotel Velveeta starting offense for Purdue. 
We highlight Dennis Kelly, Jr. from Chicago Heights, Illinois. His 21st straight start. He'll have his hands full, trying to keep up with J.J. Watt steaming off the end. Backs in receivers. Now Kyle Adams, we've already seen him thrown to once today. He's going to be a big deal. Just a safety valve for that true freshman quarterback, Sean Robinson. Three receivers in the game on third down. Another pass play, and this time going down is Sean Robinson. It's J.J. Watt with his sixth sack of the year. And boy, that didn't take long, did it? J.J. Watt, you talked about how athletic he is in the open. You're going to see him. He's just going to come off the edge on this side and just flatten down the line of scrimmage. And J.J. Watt, just a tremendous player. I talked in the open about his ability to bend. That time we saw him get underneath the tackle and get to Robinson. That time working against right tackle Nick Mondek. End over end punt. Gilreath backs away from it. It's picked up by Aaron Henry. And Henry is tackled the minute he touches the football. It's a return of two yards after a 41-yard punt. Wisconsin will have the football back when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Don't forget to go interactive and play along with every football game this season on the Big Ten Network with the Big Ten Blast Game, presented by Rotel and Velveeta's famous queso dip. Predict plays, answer trivia, compete and chat with friends. For a chance to win the ultimate tailgate package, sign up now to play the Big Ten Blast only at BigTenNetwork.com. Second offensive series for the Boilermakers. They give the ball to Dan Durking, who powers his way out to the 28-yard line. A pickup of six for the senior from Chicago. Yeah, that time just trying to run it right into the teeth of the defense of Wisconsin. Again, when you have a quarterback, it's not taking a great deal of reps. You have to simplify the offense. You certainly don't want him to be thinking so much. Purdue, first time they had the football, they attempted two passes. And then on third down, John Robinson wanted to pass, but was sacked by J.J. Watt. So aggressive play call to the skies again. Pass is complete, and Tavian Edison has enough for a Boilermaker first down. Their first first down of the game. Take a look at the auto owner's insurance starting defense for Wisconsin. Up front, everyone talks about J.J. Watt. I want to talk about Ethan Hemer. He is making his second career start. Former walk-on, replacing Jordan Cahoot at one of the tackles. Linebackers, Calmer, St. Jean, no one on Wisconsin has played more games. This is his 47th career game. He's got 100 and... The result of the play is the first down. Close to 150 tackles. And in the secondary, Jay Volai, senior captain. He is the thumper of the secondary. First and 10. And that uh, was some bad news right there announced against Purdue. They got the first down, but they're going to be marched backwards because of a personal foul. Well, and you have to just play discipline football. Believe me, Wisconsin doesn't need any help in this one. Use good judgment. Be sensible and make sm smart decisions. So the ball's going to be moved all the way back to the 20-yard line. It is still first down at 10. Robinson still has the football, gets out to the 34-yard line. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. Thank you, Eric. Illinois and Michigan first play from scrimmage for the Wolverines. Denard Robinson, 75 yards to Roy Roundtree. Longest completion of Robinson's career. Illinois has kicked a field goal subsequent to that, so it's 7-3 Michigan. Eric? Dave, thanks much. Keep an eye on that one. 13-yard run by the quarterback, Robinson. This time, Robinson hands it off. This is Keith Carlos, and Carlos picks up 13 yards. That's consecutive plays of 13 yards for Purdue's offense. Well, this is just a, sort of an end around. When you look at Carlos, he's going to get behind the blocking. Nice job by Durking on a cut block. And really, when you look at Purdue, they don't seem to have that fear factor going against Wisconsin, at least so far. Full backfield next to Robinson. It's Carlos and Durking. Robinson wants to throw. Nothing developing, pulls it down, and just trying to get back to the line of scrimmage. He doesn't. He loses a yard. What do you think about how do you defend or block J.J. Watt? Well, you better have a lot of bodies on him. He attracts a crowd. One of the premier defensive ends 
in the country he has to be accounted for. But if you're at home wondering who Sean Robinson is what type of player is he he's an athletic player that can run likes to make plays with his feet throws it well enough as we've seen so far and also very decisive as he's flashed. Wants to throw. Looking out in the flat, nobody home. In the general direction of Wayne Elgrave, Sandy doesn't play much on offense. And it's going to be incomplete, bringing up a third down and 11. We talked about keeping Robinson out of thinking type plays where it's paralysis by analysis, Eric, where you're thinking so much you can't play fast. <laughs> Think about get off, snap anticipation. <laughs> Just kind of chuckle when you watch him play because you're just not supposed to be able to do that on the college level. Third and a bunch designed quarterback run and Robinson's going to get the first down. <laughs> Boilermakers cross the 50 yard line and pick up 17 yards. Well, apparently Robinson didn't get the memo about how good Wisconsin defense is because he is confident. He's using his own natural ability to make plays, seeing the field well. Finds the hole in the defense, executing the offense, staying within himself, and moving the chains for Purdue. That's now four first downs for this Purdue offense on this drive. Another short pass. This one is complete. Edison with the grab. Gain of six on first down. Purdue methodically working their way down the field. Credit Danny Nord, or excuse me, Gary Nord, offensive coordinator for Purdue. Mixing it up nicely to keep Wisconsin on their heels, off balance. Inside run plays with the quarterback, throwing the ball outside on the perimeter. Different formations and groupings as we see trips up top. They hand off to Durkin. Passes knocked down at the line of scrimmage. And in there was Calmer St. Jean. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. All right, Eric, here's the latest on Minnesota and Michigan State. Edwin Baker with a 30-yard touchdown run. It's eighth TD run of the year. Spartans on top, 7 and up. Thank you, Dave. Well, it's a nice drive continuing here for Purdue, but they're going to need to pick up four yards. Third down at four, Durking. Makes the first man miss and has another Boilermaker first down. This has been an impressive drive. It has, and that was an impressive run by Durkee, because that time he had J.J. Watt in his face. Now watch him get downhill, makes the move on Watt there, runs through the contact. And now Watt is being helped off the field. I was, I was down on the field earlier before the game, and when you stand next to J.J. Watt, you just get an idea of what an imposing figure he is. Take a look here. He's trying to stretch out, make the play. Durkin gets the edge. We'll keep an eye on that. Brett Bielema has his best defensive player next to him right now on the sideline. This is the 11th play of this drive. Robinson, another designed quarterback run. Pretty nifty with those feet. Picks up three yards. Yeah, good word choice there. Nifty and nimble. Athletic. And I like what Purdue's doing. They're peppering in the run, pass. Wisconsin defense right now sort of guessing at what the Boilermakers are doing. A.J. Watt still not in the game right now for Wisconsin. Quick toss. Robinson completes it. Edison. And Edison with a chance. Did he? Yes. Touchdown, Purdue. What a thought at Purdue, an excellent drive, and it results in six. Well, if you want to be a baller, you have to make plays on the big stage. 
And that's what Edison did that time. Just a simple screenplay, but he hit second gear. GPS system set for the end zone. Great drive. Even better finish for Purdue. So the first points of the game scored by Purdue riding their 19 year old true freshman quarterback Sean Robinson. He takes his team 12 plays 77 yards and the extra point is good. So it's officially a 7 nothing lead for Purdue. Purdue off to a great start offensively against the Badgers. Don't go shedding a tear for Danny Hope and his Purdue Boilermaker starting a 19 year old true freshman quarterback just engineered a heck of a drive. Oh yeah and the key here is watch Kyle Adams he's going to come off and get the spring block on the cornerback to set up the screen. Good job of reading it by Edison. Boy looking at that drive who would have thought Purdue's last in the conference in scoring offense. End over end kick. Brady Ewing on the return. And Ewing. Powers his way to the 24 yard line. The United States Marine Corps would like to salute Purdue tight end Kyle Adams. Today's leader of the game, fifth year senior from Austin, Texas. 3.97 GPA in management. He's a two time academic All Big Ten honoree. And how about this? Finalist for a Rhodes Scholarship. That will be announced next week. There is a man down right now for the Purdue Boilermakers trying to cover that kick. Takpindi Jamiro is the man who is down. Hopefully he's okay. This Purdue team is coming fired up. Obviously Wisconsin had a week off. Is their timing a little off in this one so far? See him up on his feet here. Let's go down to the field. Carissa, what's the latest on J.J. Watt? Well, good news for Wisconsin fans. He's over on the uh, sideline here. He was nursing a strained left shoulder. Trainers were looking at it, kind of rotating it around a couple times, but he quickly got up, clapped his hands, and said, let's go. Sat back down on the bench. There's definitely uh, no keeping him out of this game, guys. Thanks, Chris. And yeah, you can see him trying to get that left shoulder where he wants it to be. And that's tough, because he uses those arms to try and disengage blockers. So I'm sure he feels the pain. And around. This is Gilry. And Gilry trying to get into space. Does so. Picks up the first down and then some. 14 yards. Gilry picks up. We've seen him at least fake the end round a couple of times. This time they give it to him and it's a good gainer. Yeah, he's one of those tweener types between like wide receiver return guy. But the constant is that he's good with the football in his hands. And a tremendous run after catch guy. Well, that'll be the final play of our first quarter. A good one. If you're a Purdue Boilermaker fan, they lead the Wisconsin Badgers after 15 minutes. 7 0 is our score. Welcome back, everyone. Brett Bielema's Wisconsin Badgers. Surprised right now. They trail Purdue 7 0. There is uh, John Clay's father, also named John Clay. He's watched his son rush seven times for 30 yards so far today. He is now 83 yards away from 1,000. Will be his second straight 1,000 yard rushing season. Tolzine, oh, dangerous pass. It's caught out in the flat. Ricardo Allen blew it up. Gilry just had nowhere to go the minute he touched that football. Well, keep in mind, Purdue is an attacking style defense. So on the slip screen, you're going to see Ricardo Allen. What you do is you teach your corners. You see that go take your shot. He didn't wrap him up, but he certainly slowed him down to allow for the Cavalry to get there. Well played by Ricardo Allen. Allen, one of five true freshmen who will play defensively today for defensive coordinator Gary Emanuel. Second down at 10. John Clay still the deep back, seven yards behind the line of scrimmage. Holzine drops straight back in trouble loses the football Wisconsin jumps on it that was almost disastrous it was Ryan Isaac playing in just his second game of the season who knocked the football away from Tolzine. Sometimes if you're an O lineman and you start thinking about the premier guy in Ryan Kerrigan that frees things up for a guy like Ryan Isaac to get inside 
Good burst to get to the quarterback and dislodge the football. Isaac, a true freshman from Michigan City, Indiana. They say he's just a little bit crazy, and that's a good thing if you're a defensive lineman. Well, right now, this defense is playing crazy, and they got Wisconsin in third and long. Play clock winding down. Tolzien gets it off. Third down and 20. Looking for a bunch. Has a man incomplete. Nick Toon looked like he may have had a chance, but Josh Johnson, I think, batted that football away at the last moment. Well, you're seeing a Purdue team take their games up individually and collectively. And that's just great timing, good extension. Johnson playing with that, what we call the long arm, or the arm closest to the inside to make that play. So the punt team comes on, fourth down and 20. Rad Nortman kicks it high. Pretty deep, and it's caught by Wayne Elgrave Sandy. Didn't call for the fair catch, and he takes it down the left sideline. I think that surprised everyone in the building. Nice return for Grave Sandy, and the Boilermakers have the football back after the 21 yard return. So momentum definitely on the side of the locals. Purdue on top of Wisconsin, 7 to nothing. Welcome back, everyone. Big Ten Network football here at Purdue. They call themselves the cradle of quarterbacks. Well, today they have a true babe getting the start. True freshman quarterback, Sean Robinson. But so far, they haven't been afraid to have some aggressive play calls with well, him out and, there. And you have to be when you're going up a team against a team like Wisconsin. But he's staying within the framework of the offense. And they're not asking him here to do things that he can't do. It's a sign of good coaching. Touchdown last time they had the football. This time Robinson shows off that arm looking deep. Incomplete looking for Cortez Smith. Throwing it up there hoping his receiver can make a play. <laughs> you just talked about how aggressive this Purdue team is being. I think this is the definition of it. Take your shot down the field. Trying to elevate to pull this one in. Tess Smith can't get it, but I like the play call. Second down and 10. Durking in the backfield. They fake to him. Rolling right, complete to the tight end. And Adams crosses midfield and gets to the 48-yard line. Tackle made by the middle linebacker, Calmer St. Jean. Adams is kind of the safety net for Purdue. They like to get him involved in the offense. He's kind of a move tight end, not your typical end of the line guy, but he does hold up well at the point. He can get out and cause mismatch problems. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Robinson, bullet over the middle. That's going to be enough for another first down. Adams again in the mix. And again, sitting down right in front of the linebackers. That time finding a hole in the defense. He's a big body. 24 receptions on the season. Very active in that offense. This is when one of the leaders of Wisconsin has to step up defensively. And say, look, let's slow this thing down. We got to go out and make a play. J.J. Watt is back in the game. Tweaked his shoulder last time Wisconsin was on defense. Delayed handoff. Keith Carlos busts into the secondary. Good gain on first down. Gain of seven, maybe eight yards. Well, today's Case IH Alumni Spotlight features Purdue great Mark Herman, a member of the creator of quarterbacks. He was the Big Ten MVP in 1980. He was the first college quarterback to throw for 8,000 and then 9,000 career yards. He'll be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame December 7th in New York City. On second down, a gain of one, and Mark Herman is in the building. He's standing by with Carissa. He sure is. Well, first of all, congratulations, and uh, how about your Boilermakers? On a roll here, Sean Robinson stepping yeah. up. you got to like it so far. The young freshman's doing his thing out there, and the defense is playing well, so the Boilers, heavy underdogs, they're coming out smoking Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Well, congratulations on your honor, the second quarterback in the last five years from Purdue to be elected into the College Football Hall of Fame. How important is that to you? Well, a huge thrill. I had four marvelous years here at Purdue. I, I love this place, and to be able to represent Purdue University and have this honor. It's a pinnacle in my career. And a great looking jacket there, Mark. Thank you. I think it fits well, doesn't it? <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the game. Uh, thanks, Thank you. Thanks. Guys. Thanks, Carissa. 
That was a third down and short. They ran it to Durking, and he didn't get it, so the offense stays on the field. Quickly back to the line of scrimmage, and Robinson to throw. They get the first down, complete to Smith. Chris, you got to just love the way that Purdue is playing the game early on. They are going all out, calling all the plays in the playbook. Yeah, it's intensity, it's tenacity, it's focus, it's will, and most importantly, it's execution. Danny Hope with the guts of a cat burglar. Some of the things that he's trying here, knowing that he's got a 19-year-old quarterback, he and Gary Nord, their offensive game plan so far has been impressive. Robinson to throw. Looking in the direction of Durkin. And the pass simply thrown away. But the things that jump out at you immediately about Robinson is there's no imprecision. There's no indecision. He knows where he wants to go with the football. Takes the shot. So he's showing the guts that you want to see in a young quarterback. This is a guy who's got a pedigree. He was a big time recruit. When he showed up here in West Lafayette, he had opportunities to play at Iowa, Northwestern, Nebraska, Boston College, Kansas. And he chose to play here at Purdue and getting on the field early in his career. Good shake and fake move. Ball comes loose late. It's a live football. Wisconsin's got it. This is Antonio Finellis. He's got a chance down the left sideline, and Finellis is tackled at the 28-yard line by the quarterback, Robinson. One of the things you have to be able to do in a game of this magnitude is you have to protect the football. And then that time, that was Mike Taylor coming in with a little tomahawk chop to strip the ball out. Good defense by Wisconsin. Finellis picking it up the and going the other way. The is under further review. But you have, if you're running back, you have to expect contact Hold the football high and tight. They're going to take a closer look and see exactly when that football came out. It was Antavian Edison looking for extra yards, and Mike Taylor, just with that big old right arm, seemed to have poked it out. But see how the ball gets away from his body to even give Taylor a chance. You have to keep that football high and tight. I guess the, the key thing that the replay official is looking at would be the legs. When is Edison down? Correct. Is his knee on the ground before that ball pops loose? Remember, the ruling on the field was it's a fumble, a live ball, and a recovery for Wisconsin. So we're going to need indisputable video evidence to prove that that wasn't the case. Well, and to prove that his knee was indeed down before that ball came loose. After further review, the play stands as called on the field. And judging by the swiftness in which that call was confirmed, it showed you that there was not indisputable visual and video evidence. Still early in this game, over 10 minutes to play here in the second quarter, but that could be a game-turning play. The way that Purdue was playing and the momentum that they had to give the football up and allow a 51-yard return, now Wisconsin now to grab this game right back by the throat. And, it, and it's what you do with it. Can they capitalize here? Clay. Is tackled down at the 24-yard line. Today's Verizon text to vote question is, which injured player's absence has affected his team more? Wisconsin's Chris Borland, Keith Smith, the wide receiver of Purdue, or Ohio State defensive back Tyler Moeller? Text your vote to 20284. Text one for Borland, two for Smith, three for Tyler Moeller. We'll announce the results in the third quarter. Message and data rates may apply. Text stop to quit. Those questions get tougher each and every week. Play surrounded and brought down Joe Holland among others on the stop ball comes loose late but they're going to say that Clay was down it's going to be a loss of two and see for me if I'm Purdue I like that they do sweep toss to Clay because you're getting him going laterally which isn't his strength oh. was there a whistle that stopped the play because the ball did come loose before Clay was on the ground 
They stand him up pretty good. And the ball's ripped out before he's down, but we don't know if there was a whistle that sounded. Well, they've seen enough. Wisconsin keeps the ball, and Tolzien goes down. On third down and long, Brandon Taylor gets the sack. It's a loss of three. Well, Coach Bielema needs to let his guys know that they're in a fight here. Purdue is playing possessed football, defensively bending the corner, getting to the quarterback, causing a lot of duress for Scott Tolzien. So second field goal opportunity for Philip Welch. Missed from 40 earlier. This one from 44 is good. Center cut. So Brett Bielema's Wisconsin Badgers, they score for the first time. They put three on the board. They're still down against Purdue. Our score, Boilermakers seven, Badgers three. Big Ten Network football is brought to you in part by Verizon. Own the airwaves. The signal is yours, Verizon. Rule the air. By fresh, creamy Haas avocados, nothing else will do. By Sonic, enter for a chance to win the Sonic Flavor Touchdown Sweepstakes. And by MFS, creating innovative investments since 1924. Purdue hasn't defeated Wisconsin at home since 1997. Billy Dickin was the quarterback. Right now, Boilermakers looking good. They're on top of Wisconsin by a score of 7-3. to three. And really playing well defensively. They gave up three points, but Wisconsin's been 3 of 6 on third downs. 0 for 3 on the last three. Bouncing ball picked up by Al Tariq McBurse. And McBurse spun around and tackled at the 29 yard line. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for Discover Game Break. Eric, thanks. Michigan and Illinois on a fourth down and nine. Michigan goes for it. Denard Robinson, 33 yards to Roy Roundtree, his second TD of the game. Made it 14 all, but the Illinois team has just responded with a touchdown from Jason Ford, so it's 21-14. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Dave. 35 points already in that game. Michigan trying to pick up their sixth win and become bowl eligible. They do so. Dan Durking with the carry picks up three yards, second down and seven. Text keyword Rotel to 20284 to enter the Rotel feed their game phase sweepstakes. The winner will receive 52 weeks worth of groceries and a trip to a college football game. Message and data rates may apply. Text stop to quit. Boilermakers already scored a touchdown. Last time they had the football, they were driving. Before a fumble, gave the ball back over to the Badgers. Robinson dances in the pocket. Nobody home, just throws it away. Now Robinson getting the chance to start only because a number of quarterbacks have already gone down. First it was Robert Marv right at the beginning of the season, and in recent games it's been Rob Henry dealing with the injury his to his right finger. Yeah, you get to take a look at both guys right there, Henry and Robert Marv. And you hear coaches say all the time, you're one play away, and I've been on the other end of that. Sometimes you don't believe them. You think it's just coaches speak. Well, Robinson's living it. Third down and long. Set up a receiver screen, and they get a first down. Edison has been heavily involved early in this game. He picks up 12 yards. And again, simple play call. That time, just another screen play. Good blocking up front. Edison's been the guy. Not asking any of the players to do too much. Just make the plays when they're there to make. Already four catches, 54 yards. The five catches, 54 yards for Edison. He scored the touchdown. He's also fumbled the football away, so you got to take the bad with the good. Durkin, nowhere to go. Got the handoff late, and he loses a yard. We talked about J.J. Watt, and really, to me, that he can hold the point in the run, which makes him a lot of, a lot different than a lot of defensive ends. How can he do that? Well, because he's big, he's physical, but he's athletic enough to slide down the line and chase. 
A lot of times you hear guys looking for defensive ends that can put their foot in the ground and redirect. Change of direction. J.J. Watt does it as well as anyone. With that sack by Watt in the first quarter now has four sacks in the last three games. Second and 11. Robinson, another quick toss, this time too high for Edison. Had him on the hand, but too hot to handle. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Glenn will be along from our Chicago studios with scores and highlights. And if I'm in Wisconsin secondary, you have to have football intelligence. I and mean, you look at Edison, he's been the go to guy. You know, you got a quarterback in Robinson that's not going to make a lot of reads, so he's going to lock on a receiver and stick with it. He doesn't want to think and try to scan. So find Edison when he's on the field. Look him up. On this third down, J.J. Watt lines up as one of the defensive tackles. Gets down in a three point stance, and maybe that caused Purdue. some confusion. Purdue, Purdue decides to call timeout. It's their first timeout here in this first half. Well, Purdue's been pretty good on third down so far in this ball game. They've converted four of six. But this one will be tough to get. It's third down and long. Coming up today, 4 p.m. Eastern time, it's an encore presentation of our latest Big Ten icon, number 13. How about Big Ron Dane? Find out how the 1999 Heisman winner went on to become the NCAA's all-time leading rusher. Big Ten icons hosted by Keith Jackson and presented by Discover today at 4 p.m. Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. You mentioned Watt on that last play sliding inside the defensive tackle. That's because he has that body type that he can do that. Position versatility. Can play standing up, but could also play with his hand in the dirt. Third and 11. Robinson after the timeout throws a wobbly ball that is caught close to the first down marker by Cortez Smith. He reaches forward. I think he's got it. They needed 11. I think he got 12. Eric, I, I coach a lot of youth football camps, and I tell my kids all the time, you got to catch the bad ones with the good ones. That wasn't a Picasso by any stretch, but a nice job of Smith working for the quarterback and able to go up and pluck the football. That's not an easy catch to make. And that ball wasn't tipped. That just came out of Robinson's hands improperly. On first down. Again to the tight end, a pickup of five. That's a good gain on first down. Kyle Adams with the grab. But Eric, we've noticed how, again, Robinson, he's, he's locking on one receiver, and, and he's living with it. He's living with the play. He's not trying to scan the field. So see if this defense starts to jump some of these routes. Yeah, it's one thing that uh, Wisconsin's defense has not done a lot of this year, and that's create turnovers. Already got one today in the fumble recovery, but that hasn't been the norm for the Badgers this year. Durkin, tough run. This kid has been pretty darn good for a while now. He picks up seven yards, made the first man miss on a tackle, and picks up a first down for Purdue. Well, he has a low center of gravity. Dirk, and he runs when he gets his shoulders down. He can be tough to, to tackle. He's going to run through most arm tackles. He's a guy that you got to wrap up. On first down, Robinson with the keeper and J.J. Watt greets him right at the line of scrimmage. It's going to say it's a loss of one. Purdue controlling this clock with these long, methodical drives. Now this is a special day in the Durking family history, also in Purdue history. 34 years ago, November 6, 1976, Dan's father, Scott, he led the Boilermakers over an upset of the number one ranked Michigan Wolverines. It was right here at Ross Age Stadium. In that game, Scott Durking, 38 carries. That remains the rushing record for the Purdue Boilermakers 34 years later. Both teams combined in that ball game, Chris, they ran it 111 times, just 22 <laughs> passes. That's a different age of football. 
blocking and tacking back in that day. And you know, the funny thing is, as much as this game has changed, it still comes down to who blocks the best and who tackles the best, even in these wide open systems. We will see Danny Hope's team take on the Michigan Wolverines here at Ross A. Stadium next week. Third down at seven. Nine to get is the 24. Oh, and Durking's got the first down and then some. Tackled by the ankles at the 15-yard line. Aaron Henry saved a touchdown. And Eric, what you're noticing is Durking's getting to the second level before he's even engaged by a defender. So that's a credit to the offensive line. That time, Henry coming up. But Purdue, you'll take that all day, every day. Chris, how much credit are we going to give to this Boilermaker offense, or how much blame should we give to maybe a flat Wisconsin Badger defense? No, Purdue's going out and earning it today. And they're physical up front, which we knew they had to be. And their running backs are getting downhill and running with toughness. Look at the numbers for Birking. First down, he's been exceptional, averaging eight yards a carry this year. Fake the end around, and Robinson wrapped up, and he'll go down. Ball comes loose late. It's going to stay with Purdue. It's a loss of five. Pat Muldoon and Lewis and Zegwu combined for the sack. Yeah, and this is something for a young quarterback that's tough. you got to pick that up in the pre-snap read. Sean Robinson unable to catch Muldoon early enough. Now Purdue's offense, unlike Wisconsin's offense, not particularly great in the red zone. Just saw the numbers on your screen. It's now second down and 15 after the loss. Carlos tries the middle of the line. There's nothing there. No gain. It'll bring up third down and 15. But you have to like it, though. Purdue continues to bleed the clock, keeping Wisconsin's high-octane offense off of the field. I'm actually a little bit surprised that the Badgers haven't called timeout. They've got all three. If they want to get the ball back and have some time to do something with it, that would have been the time to call the timeout. Now Purdue may just try and run this to keep the clock moving as we get down close to a minute and 10 seconds to play here in the first half. Oh, they want to pass. Behind the intended receiver, Durking. It's incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 65 seconds left. So a productive drive and moving the ball all the way down to the 20-yard line. And the field goal unit will come on. Carson Wiggs, Jr. will attempt the field goal. This will be 37 yards. Older Chris Stotts, snapper John Finch. And Wiggs, no worries. Right through the middle, it's a 37-yard field goal made by Wiggs, his ninth field goal made on the year. Lead back up to seven for the Boilermakers. Welcome back, everyone. West Lafayette, Danny Hopes, Boilermakers with that field goal now up 10 to 3. Yeah, and this is three points, granted, but watch the swagger here at Purdue. These guys are fired up in this game, in their play and in their celebration. One last chance for Wisconsin here in the second quarter. Brady Ewing, another return. And Ewing weaves his way to the 22 yard line. Turn of 11 yards. Just a reminder, coming up, Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report. Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Glenn coming up. A lot of Big Ten football early game to tell you about. But first things first, Scott Tolzien will try and quarterback a two-minute offense with under a minute to play, 54 seconds remaining. And if you're Brett Bielema, this has been a painful half to watch, offensively and defensively. We talked about the two big wins that they've had. They have a week off. And they have just been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a fired-up Purdue team. Hand off, Monty Ball. Play not in the game, and Ball gets eight yards on first down. Badgers have all three timeouts. Let's see if they choose to use them. And they use one here. 
with the timeout in the field. We'll take that timeout as well. We'll come back with the final 43 seconds. West Lop yet in a moment. Well, we have a moment to take a look at our campus close-up presented by Nissan, and it involves Neil Armstrong Hall of Engineering, the flagship of Purdue's College of Engineering, some significant Purdue engineering achievements. How about Neil Armstrong, the astronaut, his first step on the moon? Or how about the construction of the Golden Gate Bridge, <laughs> the construction of the Hoover Dam? Wow. Those are some significant things in American history. Sure are. I bet you've seen some smarts just walking by that. Building. Those ideas germinating here in West Lafayette. Second down and two, Badgers. Complete, that's Toon. He's been a big factor in the ball game. He dives forward to the 49-yard line. That is a gain of 19 yards. Tolzien working against the clock here, trying to direct traffic on the field, get his guys lined up. Upper right-hand corner of your screen, you see that Michigan has just scored another touchdown. It's a 21-21 tie in their game with Illinois. Ball batted at the line, that was Kerrigan, and he can't come up with the deflection. Ryan Kerrigan just in the mix somehow, trying to get that big mid up, mid up in the air. And it actually is his partner, Kowan Short, who knocked it up, and Kerrigan almost had the interception. Yeah, and as you tell your defensive lineman, you get pushed if you can't get to the quarterback, throw those hands up. That time, big Kawan Short, six foot four, able to deflect the football. He leads the team now with seven passes blocked. Normally, that's a category that you have your defensive backs, your corners, lead the team in. But Short now to go along with those six sacks and 12 and a half tackles for losses, seven PBUs. And that's because he gets good push. He's a strong body inside and he's not going to get home all the time and as such he gets those hands in the air. Latest Big Ten icon and it has significant Purdue ties. Number 12 John Wooden. Before he came the Wizard of Westwood he was one of the great Boilermaker basketball players of all time. It's an all new Big Ten icons hosted by Keith Jackson and presented by Discover. That's Tuesday 9 p.m. Eastern time only on the Big Ten Network. John Wooden Drive. I actually parked my car today on John Wooden Drive. Saw that, brought a smile to my face. Let's <laughs> hope it's still there after the game. <laughs> 28 seconds remaining here in this first half. Badgers have just burned their second time out. They have one remaining. Tolzien is a man wide open who gets out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. 21 yards on the pitch and catch. Well, that play took a little time. Pressure inside, a stunt by Kerrigan trying to get to Tolzien. Stands in there and delivers a strike. Good pocket presence by Tolzien. Getting the ball out in front of Gilroy. That's the biggest play of the half so far for Tolzien and the Wisconsin offense. Gain of 20. Again, tons of time, complete. Lance Kendricks, his first catch. Kendricks dealing with an ankle injury, picks up nine yards. Clock continues to move, and the Badgers forced to call. Eric, any time Wisconsin has that much time, my eyeballs immediately go to Ryan Kerrigan. And how are they blocking him? We're going to see Kerrigan's right there. What, what do they do to kind of stave him off? What it, and it's a nice double team. Good job of slowing him down. That's the key to giving Scott Tolzien the time he needs in the pocket. That was the entire right side of the offensive line. Kevin Zeitler and Ricky Wagner on the double team to keep Kerrigan out of the mix. Well, tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday, the Cardinals look to keep pace in the NFC West as they head to Minnesota to take on Adrian Peterson and the Vikings. Plus, these other matchups coming your way. Coverage begins tomorrow at noon Eastern for Fox NFL pregame show. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Interesting game. The Bears playing the Bills in Toronto. North of the border. Toronto not that far away from Buffalo, so I'd imagine that would be uh, yeah. the game dominated by Bills fans. All right, 10 seconds remain here in the first half. Badgers running out of time. Ball spotted at the 21. Tolzien straight drop back. Looks to the end zone. Looks for Toon incomplete. 
And that's about as adventurous as the Badgers are going to get. One shot to the end zone. And they're going to bring on the field goal unit. Yeah, great coverage outside by Johnson. You see the help over the top. Blanket coverage. And that's a win for Purdue to get off the field on third down. So Welch has made one and missed one. Will attempt a 38-yard field goal. And Wickesburg is the holder. The kick is good. So that's going to do it for the first half of play. The Wisconsin Badgers heavy favorites in this game. They go to the locker room trailing by four. 10 to 6 is our score. Boilermakers riding a true freshman quarterback. Their offense has been hands down better than what we've seen from Wisconsin. Well, they've stepped up their level of play. And, and let's face it, these guys, you know, they read the papers. They're online and they read how everyone was saying Wisconsin was going to come in here and dominate from the first whistle. These guys are fired up. They're playing with intensity. Let's send it down to Carissa. Coach, Wisconsin started to move the ball there, but as of right now, your team's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence, especially your young quarterback. What do you like most about this first half? We're having a lot of fun, and we're sticking to the game plan, and we've been aggressive play calling-wise, and our, and our guys have, have played aggressive. Uh, we came out and opened the game with the onside, and uh, it's a shame we, you know, we had a guy offsides on it, but we felt like we sent a message to our team that we came today to play to win. How do you control this momentum that you take into halftime? We don't want to control it. We want to build on it. Appreciate the time, uh, Coach. Thank Thanks. You. Carissa, thank you so much. I don't know if I've ever heard a head coach at halftime say, we're having fun. Indicative of the way the Boilermakers are playing. Stay tuned for the Buffalo Wild Wings Halftime Report. Dave, Jerry, Howard, and Glenn, they're coming up next. Our halftime score, Purdue 10, Wisconsin 6. everyone Big Ten Network football presented by the United States Marine Corps getting ready for quarter number three before we do let's go down to the field and Carissa Thompson well Purdue been able to get pressure onto Scott Tolzien that's for sure for Brett Bielema he said give credit to their front four they're playing a heck of a first half but we got to start running the ball he goes we're getting away from what we do best which is running the football defensively as for Purdue's success he goes we got to start making some tackles plain and simple a fired up Wisconsin team and there's a reason, gentlemen, we play two halves of football. Back up to you. Thank you, Carissa. Very good point. Only halfway home are the Purdue Boilermakers. Purdue did play very well, though, for 30 minutes. Start of our second half presented by Jared, the Gallery of Jewelry. Into the end zone. Al Tariq McBurst is just going to take a knee. It'll be Boilermaker football first and 10 from the 20. We talked about the importance of Purdue simplifying their offense, staying within the framework, and allowing that guy, Sean Robinson, to go out and execute. And you have to say that the kid's been masterful at what they've asked him to do. Credit Gary Nord again, not asking him to do too much or to do things that he just can't do. 19-year-old from Springfield, Illinois. Sean Robinson, the first Boilermaker true freshman quarterback since Curtis Painter back in 2005. Gain of one, Cortez Smith caught it behind the line of scrimmage and able to escape the first tackle. And they're going to give him a gain of two. That's one of those low balls. He goes down and able to kind of scoop it up off the shoe tops. Double catches it a bit, but nonetheless pulls it in. The receivers have been working for their young quarterback. Tight end Kyle Adams moves from one end of the line of scrimmage to the other. He gives the ball to Durkin. And Durkin close to the 25-yard line. Patrick Buttram tackle. It'll bring up third down. You heard Coach Bielema mention how the guys defensively have been doing well for Purdue up front. Well, you got to say the same about their offensive line. I mean, they've been able to sort of slow down J.J. Watt. I don't know that you can completely stonewall a guy of his caliber. But they're getting the blocks when they need to get the blocks. Badgers would love to force a three and out. Pocket holds for Robinson. Picked off. St. Jean with the football and out of bounds. 
at the 20-yard line. That's good news for Wisconsin. Not only they force a three and out, they get the ball. Well, we, we talked about it at the beginning. Here we go. We're going to see St. Jean there. He's just going to follow the eyes of the quarterback. And we said how important it is to just let the quarterback's eyes take you to the ball. He's not looking off any defenders. He hasn't done it all game. So trust what you see. St. Jean clearly did that. Big turnover for Wisconsin. Badgers had only forced seven turnovers in the first eight games. They forced two turnovers already in this one. Gilreath, the man in motion. They give it to him, and Gilreath hurdles the first man and gets down. And maybe a gain of one to the 18-yard line. Big Ten football is brought to you in spectacular high definition by Phillips Televisions. Wisconsin Badgers down by four. They're in the red zone, though, now, and knocking on the door. They have been exceptional so far this year in the red zone. And I would be highly surprised if they don't just get in power and run straight ahead at Purdue. Coach Bielema said, look, we got to stay true to who and what we are. Well, that's what the Badgers always do. And Clay running downhill. Still on his feet, down to the 11-yard line. Now, we had a chance to talk to Paul Christ, and the longtime offensive coordinator for the Wisconsin Badgers said that the key for us in the red zone, we don't change. Same play call, same personnel. It's the same thing we would run if we were at the 50-yard line. Yeah, well, you, then you get there's Paul Chris, but then you get sort of man-to-man, -man, so someone's got to go out and win. You better find number 94, Ryan Kerrigan. He's a red zone killer. Third down and two. They run behind Pedersen, and Clay dies forward. I don't know. He's going to be short. Tackle made by Joe Holland. It's going to bring up fourth and one. One thing Purdue does well is their linebackers flow quickly to the football. Great job but just scraping in Joe Holland. Chris, your thought on the play call. Looks like they're going to go for it on fourth and one. This is a lot of trust in Coach Bielema in his offense. You got 250 pounds back there. Can't be stopped. They give it to Clay, and he's got the first down. That's a gutsy call for a team down by four with a lot on the line, trying to stay in first place in conference to go for it on fourth down and one. Gutsy call, yes, but also a team that's beat Ohio State, beat Iowa. You expect guts when it's all on the line. So John Clay gets the first down, and now he'll catch a blow. Looks like he's favoring one of those ankles, which had been an issue for him over the last couple of years. Replacing him, Monty Ball. We haven't seen James White. He's here, but he hadn't played at all today, dealing with that knee injury. On first down, play action. Tolzien back in the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, Badgers! Jared Abraderis, his second touchdown of the year, a seven-yard touchdown grab. So interesting. I watched the receivers before the game for both teams, and Abraderis was the only receiver that caught every single ball. Watch it. Great play action fake. Good sell by Tolzien. And look at him going up high-pointing the football. So the Badgers take the lead. Extra point is good, and the score is 13 to 10. For Wisconsin, 10 of their 13 points have come off of turnovers. The most recent one, a touchdown to Abraderis. Football fans, you can create your own football highlight reels each week with the Big Ten football mashup presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Go to mashup.bigtennetwork.com right now to compile your favorite plays and share them with your friends. Got a good one so far here at ross Aid Stadium. Wisconsin and Purdue. Something tells me Wisconsin's going to take a shot down the field here soon. Nick Toon, the man in motion. Straight drop back from Tolzien. They do take that shot, and Toon with the grab. 
Leaping catch, Nick Toon picks up 20 yards. One thing you notice when you scout Wisconsin is that they love to work Nick Toon across the field. A lot of dig routes and cuts. He's got the body type. That time he gets the defensive back and trail. Shows his numbers to the quarterback. Good job of Wisconsin moving the chains. Now four catches for Nick Toon. Four catches, 59 yards. Monty Ball, left side. Working behind Gabe Karimi, and that's a good idea. Ball, got a chance. Did he? Yes! Touchdown, Badgers! He had one taken away by a penalty last time the Badgers had the ball, and this time not to be denied. A 31-yard score. Patience, patience, patience. For all you young running backs at home that think you have to play this game at one gear, that time Ball does a nice shot. Watch him throttle down. Just to set up the blocks, sifting and sorting all the way down the field, and then able to hammer it home. You saw the left guard, John Moffitt, Basically hand in hand with him all the way down that left sideline. That's a big time effort for Moffitt. Gabe Karimi also in the mix in the center. Peter Kahn's was on the pull. They're going to take ball. a Yeah, they're checking out where that ball crosses the pylon. It looked like his right foot may have slipped out of bounds. Was that at the one yard or the two yard line? Look at the right foot. It kind of just slides. Did it slide onto that line? Well, that will certainly be what they're looking at. It would be exactly where the ball is when that right foot slides out of bounds. Whether or not that's a clear view of whether or not he slid out of bounds, I don't know. Slips right there. Oh. oh, yeah. Look at that turf pop up. So, if he did indeed go out of bounds of that right foot, I don't believe that the ball had crossed over the end line at that point. But was it clear enough that his foot had slipped out of bounds? Right. Has to be indisputable. That's the divot. That's where he picked up the dirt. Yeah. So he lost some sod there. Whether or not his foot continued to go with the sod and slip out of bounds, that's for the replay official. Review, the ruling on the field, stands is called, touchdown. Yeah. And the key word is stands is called. Right. Key phrase, stands is called. There wasn't enough video evidence yeah. to overturn the call on the field. Exactly. It was not enough indisputable video evidence. Good job by the officials. So a chance to go up by 10. Welch's extra point is good. And the Badgers doubling their pleasure. They lead 20 to 10, courtesy of the sophomore from Missouri. Monty Ball drives the left sideline and scores from 31 yards out. Get a body over top, slow down his rush to the quarterback. Joe Holland has checked back into the game at one of the linebacker spots. He was really hit hard about 10 minutes ago. On third down. And ball is tackled immediately by Beckford. It's going to bring up fourth down. Well, Beckford leads the team in tackles. Watch him just follow the football, get in the gap, take on Shed, get there, run your feet. Everything that you're coached to do. Great job by Beckford. Good job of Purdue getting off the field on third down. And Danny Hope has got to be thrilled. We talked to him yesterday, and he said, you know what, last week we were embarrassed. We just didn't tackle like Boilermakers normally tackle. They worked on it in practice, and that was perfect form tackling by Beckford. Fair catch called for and made by Graf Sandy. It's a punt of 47 yards. Well, and for Danny Hope, I mean, it's tough because they're so banged up, so you can't give a lot of contact. 
in practice in terms of tackling, but you can still work your drill sort of thudding up, you know, good movements, pursuing to the football, running in chase, all the things that we've seen in this ball game. Now the 13th play of the second half run by the Boilermaker offense. They do not have a first down so far today in the second half. Now just a reminder, tonight it's Big Ten Network debut of hockey. The Wisconsin Badgers taking on the Gophers in Minneapolis. The puck drops at 8 p.m. Eastern. That's tonight in high definition on the Big Ten Network. Men's hockey coming your way from Minneapolis. After the gain of four, second and six. Quarterback Robinson with the keeper. And Robinson is tackled at the 40-yard line. St. Jean, who's played a nice second half with the stop. Robinson did a nice job that time of negotiating the option. He knew that the dive play was taken away by Wisconsin. He sort of put that ball out there, still pulled it back, and was able to get positive yardage. Why was Purdue so effective offensively in that second quarter and not effective at all here in the third? Well, up front is where it starts, and offensively they've been able to get good push early, but so far Wisconsin sort of settled down. They're getting good push up front by their D-line. Purdue hasn't converted their last five third downs. I don't think they're going to convert this one. It's going to be marked just short of the marker. This situation a moment ago, they punted the football. Are they still going to punt now? It's fourth down and one. Looks like uh, Coach Hope is going to go for it. Maybe wants to buy some time and ask for the measurement. So the chain gang will come on and give an accurate measurement. And while we have a moment, let's take a look at the Rotel Velveeta combination of the game because you can't win without the perfect partner. Yes. Partner. Scott Tolzien to Nick Toon. It is just a little bit short. Yeah, they've been busy, and they, and they really have all season. Nick Toon's been banged up, but he's in rhythm. And that is a dominant combo. We are talking about the same head coach and Danny Hope that started the game. An onside kick, so. You expect Moxie here. Dirking the fullback, Carlos the tailback behind him. On fourth down and one. Pitch out to Carlos, he's got the first down and more. Carlos across the 50, down to the 44. Nice play call, getting Carlos out in space and a big gainer for the Boilermakers. Yeah, you said it, just a great counter misdirection. Wisconsin clearly expecting the dive to Dirking. Gets everybody soaked down inside. Carlos doing a good job of getting on the perimeter. Well-designed offensive play. Good job of Purdue pulling it off. So a fresh set of downs after the first first down of the second half for Purdue. Robinson sets up a little receiver screen, and it's dropped by Edison. Would have been much of a gain anyway. Robinson, 19-year-old from Rochester High School, about five miles east of Springfield, Illinois. It's a big get for the Purdue coaching staff. A lot of other schools wanted him. He looks the part. 6'3", 208 pounds. He runs really well. Some other schools are thinking, hey, if the quarterback doesn't work out, we can use you as a wide receiver. We can use you defensively. But he said, I want to play quarterback at Purdue. And he hands off to Durkin, who motors across the 40 to the 39. Mike Taylor on the stop. That time draw play to Durkee. Durkee's got to really lift those knees up when he's going through the hole. I bet he could have gotten through that arm tackle. Now, Chris, this is interesting where the ball is right now. It's going to be third down and five. This could be four down territory because it would be a long field goal attempt, and you really don't want to punt it away. So they may have two plays to make the five yards. Uh, in between game, no man's land. Robinson wants to run. Good throw. Catch is made by Edison. First down, Purdue. Nice ball by Sean Robinson. We are seeing this kid come into his own. Baptism by fire, but good ball placement. Finding Edison on the out route. Third quarter winding down. See if we get another snap off. 
They do not. That'll do it for the third quarter of play. It was a third quarter dominated by Wisconsin, but over the last couple of minutes, Purdue may be reawakening. Purdue down by 10, but they've got the football in scoring range against Wisconsin when we come back. Big Ten Network Football presented by the United States Marine Corps. We've reached quarter number four. Third quarter dominated by the Wisconsin Badgers. Wisconsin trying to keep pace atop the Big Ten standings. Purdue trying to get to bowl eligibility. They need a couple of more wins before the regular season draws to a close. They're down 10, but they've got a chance right now. Ball spotted on the 20-yard line. First down and 10 for the Boilermakers. And out again, Carlos trying to get to the edge. And this time brought down by the middle linebacker, Calmer St. Jean. Gain of just two. Yeah, that was the exact same misdirection play that they ran on fourth down. Here they fake the dive once again to Durkin. Good job of Sorensen, though, holding the edge. You always want to force that back inside because the help is pursuing inside out. Second time today, Purdue has been in the red zone. Had to settle for a field goal. First time here. Ninth play of the drive. Robinson in trouble. Looking for an outlet, simply throws it away. Kyle Adams was in the vicinity, but he was blanketed by Jay Valai. Good coverage down the field by Wisconsin. Robinson had nowhere to go with the football. And all of a sudden, in the back of his head, he started thinking about J.J. Watt. Knew he had to get rid of the football. The third down situation has been reversed. Boilermakers were red hot beginning part of the game. Not so much here in the second half. Third and eight. Durking is stoned. And Zegwu and others just not giving him a chance at all to move. Caught at the line of scrimmage. What do you think about that play call? Didn't like it, flat out. I mean, you, you just faked two dive plays to Dirk, and you saw the defense really wasn't getting out of their gaps. You know, you got to get that ball in the air. Now Carson Wiggs will come on and try a 35-yard field goal. Junior from Dallas. It's holder Chris Stotts. Snap good, hold is good, and the kick true. Well, Danny Hope's team, they score for the first time here in the second half. The Boilermakers, their third scoring drive of 10 plays or more. They're within a touchdown of the Badgers. Purdue Boilermakers within seven. Wisconsin on top by a score of 20 to 13. With Chris Martin, I'm Eric Collins. This is the type of game when Wisconsin normally in the fourth quarter just tries to run out that clock by using the ground game. Sure, and why wouldn't they continue to feed the ball to Monty Ball? I mean, that's what he's been doing, running downhill. He did it last series, so just chew up the clock, run the football. Gilreath picks up the football at the three-yard line, and Gilreath is going to be pushed out of bounds. There is three different penalty flags on the field. It's a lot of laundry. Holding, receiving team, number 37, half the distance to the goal, first down. Let's take a quick trip to uh, Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover Game Break. Okay, Eric, bit of an upset brewing Second in down. Bloomington. Ben Chapel to Denise Wilson down to the Iowa one yard line, Chapel took it in from there. It's the Hoosiers on top of the Hawkeyes in the fourth, 13 to nine. Thank you, Dave. That is a big time surprise. Uh -oh. Look what I found. We saw Indiana a week ago against Northwestern and they just had a lot of kinks in the system. Looking good against the Hawkeyes. All right, Scott Tolzien, fifth year senior from Chicago. We'll try and engineer this drive that'll start at the eight-yard line. 
Lonnie Ball still in the game, replacing play, and Ball gets into space. Ball out to the 35-yard line. Great start to the drive for the Badgers. Logan Link with the tackle, but a gain of 26. Yeah, and, and Ball's interesting because he's not as big and powerful as Clay, not as fast as James White, but he's the perfect blend of the two. And so he can take a seam and get second gear and be productive. And as mentioned earlier, the offensive line has a lot of confidence in Ball. They've seen him do it time and time again. He's running with a great deal of confidence. Three tight end formation. And Ball this time nowhere to go. Gerald Gooden's had a nice second half. Tackles him for a loss of one. We see John Clay there. Helmets buckled up. I found. Yeah. Yeah. Next to James White, number 20 there. Both of them have the chin straps buckled. We haven't seen James White at all today. They don't want to play him. He's got that knee injury and just not 100%. They don't feel the time is right. Brady Ewing in motion, lines up as the fullback. On second down and short, underneath, pass is caught by Isaac Anderson. Gain of five. Well, Wisconsin's played great football in the second half. Well, Homer St. Jean with an interception. Aberderis. And, of course, they started revving up Monty Ball. That offensive line trying to control the inside. Move big bodies for Purdue. And for Purdue, defensively right here, they got to get pressure on Tolzien. Have some effect on him so he can't scan the field here. Third down and six. Line to get the 44. Tolzien in trouble, completes it underneath the two, not going to get there. Open field tackle made by Logan Link, and the punt team will come on for the Badgers. Great defense by Purdue, protecting the sticks. You're going to see Gerald Gooden finish off this play. Comes off the edge, bends the corner. Again, forcing Tolzien to throw the football sooner than expected. Nice defensive stand by the Boilermakers. So a small victory for Wisconsin. They are able to advance the ball away from the shadow of their own goal line. But they have to punt the football back to the Boilermakers. Scrape Sandy starts from the 13. And he is tripped up at the 18-yard line. Let's go to Dave Revson in the studio for a Discover game break. Okay, Eric, wild one between Illinois and Michigan, although it settled down a little bit in the second half. Remember, it was 31-31 at halftime. Michael Shaw here with an 18-yard touchdown run. Sixth of the year for him. That puts Michigan on top by seven, but the Illini are driving. Thank you, Dave. Well, that Michigan team will be coming here to take on Purdue next week. Back-to-back -back home games for the Boilermakers much needed home games. They have just been blown out their last two games they played against Ohio State and last week in Champaign against Illinois. They're playing much better today against Wisconsin. Pass complete to Gary Bush. Game of seven. Just a reminder coming up after our game. Stay tuned. Dave, Jerry, Howard and Glenn will be along to the State Farm wrap up. Scores, highlights, analysis all today's games. More early games around the Big Ten. Full receiver formation for the true freshman, Sean Robinson. Give to Durkin, tackled behind the line of scrimmage. J.J. Watt in on that stop with Jay Volai. Loss of one. Good job of Watt playing that in position. But watch, he's going to be standing up this time. Look at him, follow down the line, shuffles the feet. Gets to the football, finishes it with Jay Volai. Third and four. Finds the tight end and the chains will move. Kyle Adams, a gain of seven. Good job, Adams. What he's gonna do, here he is, he's just gonna work the interior and sit down on a hook right, right in front of the linebackers. And again, the quarterback, Robinson, decisive with the football. I like the way that he's in rhythm, particularly with Kyle Adams. Adams has been Robinson's best friend today. That's now six catches for Adams. 
Left flat, Cortez Smith can't hang on. Gary Nord, offensive coordinator, says he has never had a freshman starting quarterback. He's got that today with Sean Robinson, true freshman from Springfield, Illinois. And I'll tell you right now, I give all the credit in the world to Purdue's coaching staff for the adversity that they've been dealing with and the way they've reacted to it. Dangerous pass, it's picked off. Mike Taylor's got the football, and Taylor down the right sideline is tripped up literally by Sean Robinson. Robinson stuck the, put the foot out, he tripped him up. But it's Wisconsin football. That was the old tip drill. Robinson tried to squeeze this ball in there. Gets a little help from Niles Brinkley, pops it up in the air. Taylor doing a nice job of getting it. Oh, <laughs> shouldn't laugh. That was a legitimate trip. That's a dangerous play. Good job of Niles Brinkley, though, closing in on the receiver. You got to get him on the ground somehow. Now, if you're watching home, that is illegal. That, that just was not called. It's a Wisconsin football first down and 10. Monty Ball gets to the 15-yard line, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. You're going to call it a loss of one. Now, this, this is sudden change, though, Eric. So Purdue's defense got to rally the troops here come together and this is when you say make them take another snap offensively Kawan short Ryan Kerrigan up front they got to be the anchors and make some plays here for Purdue Scott Tolzien didn't like what he saw defensively Wisconsin for Purdue calls, calls the timeout time well we have a moment 858 remaining let's take a look at our Polaris hardest working player and it's Monty Ball coming off the bench nine carries 73 yards yeah pinch hitting but he, he's played well today and he played well against Iowa and this, he's just been active running inside outside flashing patience here setting up blocks I like the way he's keeping the football high and tight going into contact and really just running with a great deal of purpose authority and determination well, Chris, just while we have a moment, chance for a small editorial. This is what's different about the Big Ten and the Western Athletic Conference. When people start talking about Boise State and the Broncos, they play great football, they're world beaters, big fan. But on a week-to-week -week basis, you're in the Big Ten. You take on a team like Purdue, which has been struggling in recent weeks, but they're still Purdue. They've still got elite athletes at every position. They still are deep, and they still can surprise you. I'm not sure you can say that about every team in the Western Athletic Conference. No, I'm sure you can't not say that about that. I totally agree. And then match the physicality. I mean, we knew that Purdue had to come in, be physical and tackle, and they've done that for the most part. But I totally agree with you there, Eric. I mean, it's just a much different deal when you're talking Big Ten football and you're talking week in, week out. There's just, you know, there's no free meals in this conference. And we've seen how tough this conference is. Both teams dealing with injuries that basically stem from huge, talented bodies banging each other sure. every single week during the fall. Makes a difference. All right, after the timeout, second down and 11. They give it to Ball, and Ball with a wide open lane! Touchdown, Wisconsin! Yard scamper to pay dirt. Money ball, his second touchdown of the ball game. Eric Howard Griffith in our studio says it all the time. Run with your eyes. Here's a great example. Look at that vision and cut back to see the lane. Beautifully done by Money Ball. Lead is 13. Make it 14. Just in case you're wondering, it's not Monty Hall, it's Monty Ball, and he's having a ball. Big day for the kid. Today's game is presented by the United States Marine Corps, the few, the proud, the Marines. By Phillips Televisions, so amazing you won't be able to take your eyes off of it. By Case IH, visit CaseIHIdeals.com for promotional offers. And by Rotel and Velveeta, Try Rotel and Velveeta's famous queso dip, the ultimate game day snack. Yeah, the Boilermakers in trouble. 
Monty Ball and the Wisconsin Badgers have taken a 27-13 lead. And that's a result of controlling the front line. Good blocking up front, good cutbacks by Ball. Who's got to come out here, though, and make a statement? Returnable kick. McBurse from the three-yard line. And McBurse still on his feet, crosses the 30, gets to the 31-yard line. Before this drive begins, take a look at our sprint epic run of the game. And it was just a couple of moments ago, Chris. Yeah, we're talking about running with your eyes, good vision, balance, finish. There's not a lot of fall off between the running backs of Wisconsin, which is a great sign. Clay White, Ball. They can all hurt you in many ways. Ball 11 for 87 in those two touchdowns. Over the middle pass is low. Looking for Antavian Edison. Second down and 10. This is asking quite a bit, you would imagine, of a true freshman quarterback, Sean Robinson. Yeah, interesting, because I was just thinking, now it's a different sort of mindset for Robinson. Now he's got to throw Purdue back in this thing, and you wonder just between the ears how he's doing as a player, particularly as a young quarterback. Just saw upper right-hand portion of your screen that uh, another touchdown is scored in the game between Illinois and Michigan. Now a 38-38 tie as they play the fourth quarter. Robinson, another interception. The ball is tipped, and it's going to be a touchdown. This is Finellis. A pick six for the Wisconsin Badgers, and they now have blown this one open wide. Defense again stepping up for Wisconsin. Stealing the moment, making big plays. You mentioned it earlier how Wisconsin hadn't gotten their hands on many balls. Certainly did in this game. Good job, Finellis, getting the carom and putting this thing in the house. That's now two touchdowns in the last 23 seconds for the Badgers. They're up by 20, trying to make it 21. Extra point is good. 34 to 13 is the score. Take a look at our Chex Mix fan cam. Chex Mix on game day were made to mix. Badger fans making the trip down from Madison. Loving it now, but they were uh, white knuckling it for the first 30 minutes of this game. Sure. But I think it still speaks to the resilience and the belief pattern. You know, they, they took some punches. They knew they were. Got their nose bloody, but hadn't stopped fighting. You know, hats off to Brett Bielema, his defensive coordinator, Dave Doran. There's uh, a couple of different thoughts when you play against a young quarterback. You can pressure him and force him to make mistakes, or you can play back and wait for them to make mistakes. And Bielema's defense, they waited, were patient, and eventually Robinson made the mistakes and the receivers made mistakes that the Badgers have cashed in on. Sure, and I think there's a reason that they've had greater success as the game unfolded. I mean, look at this kid. They're, he's the unknown. It's hard to, to defend the unknown. Not a lot of tape going into this game, just how fast he is in person. So a lot of it's reactionary, and so far Wisconsin doing a good job of responding. McBurst from the five-yard line. And he is down at the 29. Let's go down to the field. Carissa, what do you have? Well, guys, for Brett Bielema, focus is everything at this point in the season, especially when you're sitting atop the Big Ten with a couple other teams, as we know. So for Coach Bielema, he charted out the next four weeks for his player every single day. Practice, practice, travel day, game, etc. And he did that for a reason, so he could keep, keep his team focused on the day-to-day -day approach. He said if you write it down, it's easier for those guys to see and, of course, maintain that focus. Thank you, Carissa. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, he flat out is a forward thinker in terms of how he wants his team to be prepared. End around, Gary Bush to the 45-yard line. A lot of head coaches basically go day to day, but not Brett Bielema looking into that future. Yeah, and it's interesting as we see this, this end around here. Nice block by Durkee. The D lineman on the ground. But yeah, you know, advanced thought or forethought is good by Coach Bielema, but the reason he's doing it is to get, keep his guys in the moment, not allowing them to get ahead of themselves. 
Wraparound handoff, McBurst. Gain of a couple. Another interesting coaching strategy for Brett Bielema. He openly talked with his team this week about some of the possibilities at the end of the year. What are the tiebreakers that are going to settle the Big Ten race if there are a couple of teams that are tied? Talked about head-to-head. -head. He talked about overall winning percentage, the BCS standings. Wanted to make sure that his kids got it from the source. He knew they'd be talking about it, so he figured, you know, let's get it all out in the open and let's do it as a team. Robinson on the design rollout. Crosses midfield, gets to the 49. It's going to bring up third down. Don't forget, Tuesday night, we will unveil our latest Big Ten icon, and number 12, John Wooden. Before he became the Wizard of Westwood, he was one of the great Boilermaker basketball players of all time. It's an all-new Big Ten Icons, hosted by Keith Jackson and presented by Discover, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Third down at five. McBurse runs into his own man, bounces out, gets the first down. And McBurse to the 30-yard line. Maybe the most impressive run we've seen so far today for Purdue. Yeah, and that's natural ability. McBurst, you're going to see at the end of this run, he's going to do a nice little jump cut. This is something you can't teach. Following the blocking. There it is. Finding his way. Robinson trying to set up a screen, but just uh, no one was allowing Keith Carlos to get free. That was sniffed out beautifully by the defensive line of Wisconsin. And just to go back to Coach Bielema for a second, I think one of his best traits is his ability to communicate with his players. He does a good job of being relevant, understanding what players are thinking. He knows that these guys are in tune with what's going on online. So he said, let's talk about it. Let's get out in front of it. Keep these players locked into the moment. Wisconsin calls their second timeout. They had 12 men on the field and were about to be penalized. A scoring update. Minnesota, they get on the board. Their game against Michigan State. So you have to sort of empathize with Minnesota. Just got to be a team with emotional exhaustion. Losing their coach, Coach Brewster, during the season. It's like a family split up. That's a tough deal for those kids. Don't forget to watch Big Ten games at home or watch them on the go with VCast. Live college football and basketball games streaming right to your VCast phone only from Verizon. After the timeout, Wisconsin has just one timeout left. It'll be second down and 10. Robinson completes it underneath. Smith. Now one thing we've noticed this afternoon, Chris, is even though Purdue has lost a whole bunch of quality players, difference makers offensively, came out to play. They're still listening to what Coach Hope and his staff are saying. And I, I've talked to a bunch of people surrounding the Boilermaker program, and that's the, the big key with Danny Hope. His kids want to play well for him. Well, they do, and I love what Danny Hope said yesterday. He said, like, yes, we've been banged up, we've been injured, but he told his guys they can't use that as an excuse. Just throwing it up, it is incomplete off the fingertips of Edison. It's going to bring up fourth down. If you look at the best players for Purdue, Ryan Kerrigan, for instance, high motor player, never play, takes a playoff. He is a great effort guy. The one thing that Danny Hope said to us is that he's never had to coach his team to give great effort. And I think when you come into a game, even if you're you know, sort of mismatched on paper, when you give great effort and you play relentlessly, you have a chance. Down by three touchdowns, fourth down at seven. Boilermakers are going to go for it. J.J. Watt coming in. Can't bring Robinson down. Complete. Nope, the incomplete. That's uh, going to be a change of possession. It's going to be ball to Wisconsin. 
He was looking for Carlos out of the backfield, but it's uh, going to be Wisconsin football. When we come back, Scott Tolzien and the Badgers will take over. up front for the Badgers when they had to move things around it was you never really want to do that on the offensive line one guy goes down and just like links in the chain well and if you look at Wisconsin's offensive line John Moffitt and Gabe Karimi I mean both of those guys got invited to the senior bowl seat here I mean that's just that's unprecedented along with their tight end Lance Kendrick Three guys going to the senior bowl from this Wisconsin team. It speaks to how talented they are. It looks like Bill Nagy will have to come on and replace him. That's the man who played the second half against Iowa. Senior from Cleveland, Ohio. Cox is a tremendous player, makes all the calls up front for that offensive line. We saw him earlier in the game pulling out, getting on the perimeter, making setup blocks. So Bill Nagy does come on. There he is from Hudson, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. He's looking ahead for Wisconsin the next couple of weeks. They've got a game next weekend in Madison. Next to Indiana. On the road, Michigan. Finish up. to Purdue he said 
there's not one quarterback, wide receiver, or running back playing in this game today that was playing when he first arrived. So third down and six after the timeout called by Purdue. Purdue still has two timeouts here with 3.47 remaining. And, uh, Boilermakers trail in Brett Bielema's Wisconsin Badgers 34 to 13. Third downs have not been particularly kind to Wisconsin here. In recent uh, vintage, they're over for their last seven. Third downs, but they're still found the way to score 28 second half points. So what's going on? Well, guys, Scott Tolzien, a parent's dream. I mean, he's such a leader on this football team, but also getting it done in the classroom. He's been on Wisconsin's Dean List six times, a 2009 academic All-Big Ten selection. But this year, he uh, was honored with the National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Award, and he will also attend that dinner on December 7th at the Waldorf in New York. So a great honor, obviously, getting it done on and off the field, guys. Thank you, Carissa. Yeah, he's... Uh just had a fantastic short career. Fifth year guy, second year starting. This is going to be his 18th win during a two year period. Yeah, tremendous player, just great on and off the field. Have you ever been on the Dean's list? <laughs> no. <laughs> I think I have for much different reasons. Wisconsin has now called a timeout. That is their final timeout. Coming up in about an hour's time, 4 o'clock Eastern time. It's an encore presentation of our latest Big Ten icon, Wisconsin Badgers' own number 13 on our list, Ron Dane. We'll find out how the 1999 Heisman winner went on to become the NCAA's all-time leading rusher. Big Ten icon is hosted by Steve Jackson and presented by Discover today at 4 p.m. Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Western against Ron Dane up in uh, Madison. Did you? No. I've seen him many times, but never got a chance to play against him. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, go. No, on that, those days, Eric, it was Brent Moss, Terrell Fletcher, who were great backs in their own right, probably the best running back tandem that I saw during my days at Northwestern. Who's the hardest man to bring down in your recollection? Uh, I, I would say probably to Mondo be out in the two for three against him when he was at Michigan. He ran for over 300 yards, probably still running somewhere. <laughs> down 94. State Farm wrap-up coming up after this ball game. Two and a half minutes to play. Monty Ball and Evan Carey. And Ball's got the first down. Ball with the kick. Also, the Tony Cole's position that's the premier in this conference is the defensive end position. So many NFL teams run to the Big Ten Conference to see its talented defensive ends. Ball again with the carry. Well, we have an opportunity to take a look at our Phillips player of the game, and it's the fifth-year senior from Rolling Meadows, Illinois, from High School's own Scott Tolzien. Comfortable, confident, and accurate the football and really that's been the biggest change from Scott Tolzien from a season ago last year he looked imprecise wasn't sure in his reads this season he's a much different player much to the appeal of his coach, coach Beal.
forget next Saturday more regional action on the Big Ten Network. We'll be right back here Ross Age Stadium Denard Robinson and the Wolverines taking on these Purdue Boilermakers or you'll see the Gophers travel to Champaign to take on Illinois. Pre-game coverage starts at 1030 a.m. Eastern Time next Saturday presented by the United States Marine Corps. Go to Big Ten Network.com slash Game Fighter to see which game is in your area. Another update for the numbers from Monty Ball. 130 yards on the ground. Eight two of them have come in this quarter alone. Subtract a couple. Tackled behind the line of scrimmage. But for 130 seconds to play, that may have been the final snap of the ball game. Heck of a second half for Brett Bielema's Wisconsin Badgers. Yeah, they really got it together, got it back on track, and on the legs of Monty Ball, he's blocking up front. Tolzien making the play that was there. Good luck, Nick okay. Toon splashed. Good luck, Jerry. Good luck. And defensively, they were able to get turnovers and get points off of turnovers. Certainly the key in this one. Monty Ball taking over with James White out, with John Clay hampered. He goes over 100 yards. Just a tremendous day for the sophomore. Carissa, what's going on down in the field? Well, Coach, you were able to control their front four there in the second half, and 24 of your 34 points came off takeaways. What do you like about what your team did in the second half? Well, I think they just uh, didn't flinch. You know, they came back at halftime. We talked about didn't need anything miracle. We just need to do what we do, and got that big play early that started the momentum, and it really played well. So you told me at halftime you wanted to get your running game going, right? Then yeah. Clay goes out. White's already on the sideline. And lucky you, Moneyball steps up over 100 yards, a couple scores. What does that say about the depth of that position? Well, you know, at Wisconsin, we've been able to recruit great running backs. Um, got some guys that uh, really believe in what we're doing. But the guys up front, this game was won because of the O-line. Um, and then defensive, you know, takeaways. But really fun to experience. Appreciate the time. Thanks, Thank Coach. You. Good luck next week at Indiana. Guys. Thank you, Carissa. Great job. Scott Tolzien in Wisconsin. They improved to 8-1 on the year, 4-1 in Big Ten Conference play. Wasn't easy, but the second half showing you why they're the ninth team in the BCS standings. Yeah, and, and just most impressively, when you look at the wins that they've had, Ohio State, who's number one in the country, going into Kinnick Stadium and winning there, coming from behind. It's most impressive about this Wisconsin team, and they know when they're in a fight, they keep their fist balled up, as they showed in this game. Offensive line, Brett Bielema is so happy and so thrilled with the play of those five guys all season long. The last three games they've played, they've gone up against Cameron Hayward in Ohio State. They've gone up against Adrian Claiborne at Iowa. And today, they defeat Ryan Kerrigan and Purdue. The rich get richer. So congratulations to Wisconsin. They come to West Lafayette, and they win. They are now 8-1 on the year. Our final score, one final time, Wisconsin 34, Purdue 13. For Chris Martin and Carissa Thompson and our entire Big Ten Network crew, I'm Eric Collins saying so long from West Lafayette.